To the communities of Martin West, it became known as Longridge Wood, a much loved natural amenity of some 600 trees. To Middlesbrough Council, it was Site 44, a plot that they announced in 2005 was to be torn down to build 72 executive style houses. This was just over a decade after the wood was planted by Middlesbrough Council as a conservation project. The plan outraged residents and a campaign was mounted to save the wood. The majority of people don't want to live where it is just housing. They do want the children to go, grow up in green spaces. We, we just don't need to have all the housing, plus the fact that it is a natural space and children can learn about habitat here. They can learn about the flora and fauna and we, we just love it. It is so important that kids can see nature in, in the raw, to see it as it should be, not uh, sterile parklands, something where they can see, actually see deer, birds, trees. It's wonderful for them. Get them away from those computers. Get them up and about to breathe in the fresh air. Why take this away from them? It's criminal. We're also going to add to the congestion which we've already undoubtedly got within the whole of this area of Martin and Thorne. Um, and we're going to add to it again. And for what reason? Is it, is it for financial gain for the council? Um, I thought Ray Mallon was a man of the people. And he doesn't appear to be a man of the people if he's not standing by us on this small part here. This is a beautiful area. This is a really, really, really important part of my heritage. And I would like to think it's going to be a part of our children's heritage as well. Why do we need to build on it? Mayor Ray Mallon and his Labour Council defended the plan claiming Middlesbrough needed to provide housing to attract and retain affluent people. But the fact that affluent people were choosing the more spacious and greener surrounding boroughs than one dense with housing and road traffic was surely no coincidence. But that aside, didn't the plan contradict all what Ray Mallon had said regarding the environment and road traffic? Middlesbrough is leading by example to tackle the causes and effects of climate change. Not everyone is making the lifestyle changes that are now vital to ensure that we all have a healthy environment to live in. I want a permanent solution to the problem of congestion on Martin Road. And didn't the plan grossly contradict the council's Green Spaces Public Places action strategy? Middlesbrough's tree cover at 1% is 10 times below the national average. The council seeks to conserve, improve and expand the tree population. The council needs to improve the quality of our green space, protect our green space, involve people in our green spaces. And didn't the plan contradict the council's climate change strategy and the children's play strategy and the communities in control paper and the cost strategy and the regional spatial strategy and the local development framework and the Tees Valley Green Infrastructure Master Plan with knobs, bells and whistles on? It contradicted them all, but the council decreed Site 44 has been earmarked for housing since 1975, and that was that. But if that was true, why did the council plant the woodland in the mid-90s? And given the global environmental crisis that has unfolded since 1975, wouldn't tearing down a community woodland be unethical, as well as shockingly inconsistent and hypocritical? The answer, of course, is yes, yes and yes. But so what? So what if there's been public condemnation from across Teesside for three years? Mallon and the council were going to do what they wanted to do, and they did. On Monday the 15th of December 2008, at 7.30am, during the busy run-up to Christmas, they launched their ground assault. With security personnel and a police presence, a seven feet high steel fence was fast erected around the site. Local residents and the two ward councillors were given no prior warning. The council told the Gazette otherwise, but the council wasn't telling the truth. They've not even come out and told the people what they're doing this morning. This is the this No is warning whatsoever. Eh? No warning at all. This is absolutely terrible. Us as ward councillors, we should know what's going on and we have no idea. It's a bit like the Odeon and the scientific building across the road. They were pulled down, or started to be pulled down, without anybody giving any prior warning. And this is exactly the same. It all stems from the same man. I think that Ray Mallon's been really underhand doing it, you know, just moving in 
bully boy tactics, moving in the bulldozers, get it all done, and that's the end of it. Nobody can do nothing about it. And this is taxpayers' money that's paying for this. This is supposed to be a local area where people can walk the dogs, or go for a walk, or use as a shortcut. Not everybody has a car. They walk to the shopping centre, and knew they would just come along, and when they thought everyone was at work, they would just do this. Did they give you any warning at all? None at all. None whatsoever. They, they knew that people were opposed to this and I think they could have made the whole thing a lot less painful for people than they actually have done. To come out and to actually see the trees being ripped down, and that's the first we knew about it, I just think it's horrific. If children went in and behaved in this manner, the parents would be in court. But Mr Mallon, as per usual, he makes a decision and nothing, no sensible reasoning, can make him change his mind. The people are not going to win is yeah. what they're saying. Right. We, right. The people are not going to win. We will tell you what to do, say, then in, in, in the office. Well, I'm sorry, but as a councillor, I have rights. And as a councillor, I should know what's going on in my ward. And uh, the fact that they haven't told me is absolutely disgusting. It really is. I'm just, I, I, I can't tell you how disgusted I am. An inside source at the council also revealed that staff privy to the operation were warned to keep it secret or risk disciplinary action. And the council admitted to a local resident that no warnings were given deliberately to avoid a protest being organised. As soon as the machinery was on site, the perimeter fence was sealed and the carnage began. The impact upon the community, as well as the environment, was instant. Parents and kids could no longer walk their usual green route to school. So you live in the neighbourhood then? Yes, I just live in Shandon. And if you walk, do you walk this land often? Yes, I do. Walk my little girl to school, my little boy to nursery on the morning. All right. So it's appalling. They're, um, they're absolutely distraught. They wanted to walk to school this morning. They were trying to encourage people to like walk to school and not use the cars. But, yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous. We walk out out this way and my son's disabled and this is probably the only walkway that we can use with a wheelchair because it's quite flat all the way around. A couple of weeks ago, when it was snowing, we were looking out onto a lovely picturesque field that had wildlife, you know, the kids were out playing and what, they can't do that now, can they? So it's awful. I mean, look at the state of the land behind it. If you fill them that, they've churned all the grass off. Just, just the right mess. I think it's absolutely disgusting. Sheer vandalism. Look at it. Just break it off and throw it away. Overseeing the raid was Council Officer Jeff Field. Jeff couldn't stay all day as he had to attend a council meeting, ironically, about tree management, including tree protection on development sites. Can you go off the side, please? Can you go off the side, please? I've not selected a hearing like you. This is Middlesbrough Council's Green Spaces Action Strategy in action. And all this came just weeks after Ray Mallon had caught a Jonathan Porritt, one of the world's leading environmentalists, at the town hall. We wrote to Jonathan after the raid. It turns out Ray hadn't told him that his Green Beacon Authority would soon be bulldozing a conservation project and for a development that was no longer happening. The recession had seen to that, which is very much at odds with what Councillor David Budd told BBC Tees back in March. In the studio, we've got Councillor David Budd, the Executive Member for Regeneration, who joins me live. Good morning to you, David. Good morning, Matthew. Uh, so, uh, some very clear attacks on you and your policies. Is this a done deal? Yes. Now, let's hear that again. Is this a done deal? Yes. 
But I'm afraid it wasn't a done deal, was it, Dave? What did you tell the press when you tore down the trees? In the current economic climate, developers have made it very clear to us that sites which have been cleared are more attractive to them, and that Yules remain interested in the site. But interested is no done deal. The truth is, the land isn't sold, there is no developer and no development, until the market recovers, and when that'll be is anyone's guess. Who and where is anybody developing any new builds in this area? There are hundreds of houses in the area that are up for sale to let. And in the meantime, we have to sit looking at destruction. We also can't use the land. They've taken to putting all the metal fences round. And the ironic thing is, if I want to chop a tree down in my garden, I have to get permission from Middlesbrough Council. Did Middlesbrough Council get permission from the residents in this area to cut these trees down now? No, they didn't. We objected to it. But as per usual, he didn't listen. And you have an opinion and it's absolutely disregarded. At the end of the day, the people making these decisions don't live here. Um, we live here and, and we, we know what sort of works in this area and what doesn't. So in the meantime, what is happening with the site? Felling regulations prevent the destruction of the entire woodland in a single three month period. So the council have now applied to the Forestry Commission to try and get a felling license to allow them to rip out the remaining half of the wood ASAP. And they have done this knowing full well that a government inspector's report on the council's development plans is imminent and may well say the site should not be built on. But the punchline belongs to the soon to depart Tim White. The so-called world-class regeneration guru told residents it is intended to farm the site as hay meadow until such time as the development comes on stream. As tragic as it is funny, it really does beg the question. Is this the action of a green beacon authority or that of a bunch of spiteful, hypocritical despots? Regardless, the fight isn't over yet. They think that by doing this, we will give up. Well, they're very, very wrong. Um, this, this piece of land is in the development planning document. And if that inspector says that this shouldn't be built on, then it shouldn't be built on.